Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. An American fashion designer, Rachel Zoe, once said, style is a way of saying who you are without having to speak. This is Career Trail on Joy Learning TV. Today, my guest is a fashion designer. And guess what? He loves to look good. And he loves to see people look good. If you are ready, I was born ready. Let's take a look at the profile video of our guest. This week on the Career Trail. Hello, my name is Ohenba. A lot of people call me a branch of the gentleman. Catch me live on Career Trail this Saturday at 4 p.m. on Joy Learning TV. Welcome back. I believe now you have a fair idea of who our guest is, right? Yes, I have here with me a brand here, the gentleman. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing too? I'm fine. How is business? God's grace. Okay. So we know you as a brand here, the gentleman. In fact, mm -hmm. most people even don't know what the real name is. Can you tell us about yourself? Okay. So as you rightly said, a lot of people call me a brand here, a brand here, the gentleman. My name is Ohenibai Abuama. Born in Ghana, schooled in Ghana. I would say uh, I, I went to school younger age, Prince of Peace, somewhere around of Kanishi. Okay. Then I went to Kofodia Sectech from a secondary school. Kofodia. Artificial okay. arts. Artificial yeah. arts. So from there, the love for textiles came in, and I continued at KNUST, coming from University of Science and Technology. And I did industrial arts. Then I majored in textiles. Oh, okay. So that has been my educational journey. Yes, aside that, I'm some one or two courses regarding to fashion and entrepreneurship, and that is me now. Okay. So let me take you back to um, school. Okay. But before school, growing up, um, did you as, uh, aspire to become a fashion designer? Uh, I, would say, I would say yes, no. I, I, I look, or I probably see myself more as an artist than I say a fashion designer because I've, I have, I have pushed myself to a lot of things pertaining to art. I've done a little bit of film, done a little bit of. At a point in time, I was, I was into graphics. I was designing billboards and I done some invitation for the office of the president. So everything rounded art, I was in it. But my auntie, who was a seamstress, that is where the love for this started. Okay. So yes, yeah, so that is where. You know, at, at a tender age, young boy, you want to probably go and play soccer. You know, tell you, come and work, come and work. And you'll be, be forced to fix covered bathroom and doing all the stuff. And at that age, you might think they are worrying you. Okay. But I think uh, that is where the journey of this started. Okay. So, so being mad by fixing the covered bathroom for your auntie, one thing led to the other. Visual arts now, love for textiles. And that is it. Okay, so when did the love come about? Is it when you went to senior high school, before you went to senior high school, you understanding your auntie? Okay, so let me say, in senior high school, okay, mostly, you know how our system is, if, if your grades are good, they'll be pushing you to go and do the sciences. If it's bad, they'll tell you to go and do visual arts. That, that, that thing was there. So I ended up in secondary school in, in the science class. Oh, okay. But during orientation, I realized that no, what I want to do is, is the visual arts. So first year I was in the science class. Second year in secondary school, I moved myself into the visual arts class. Okay. But was it because the science um, course was difficult? I wouldn't say difficult. I realized, I realized that what's, where my passion was is in the arts. And I, I, could, I could tell myself that if I don't end up in the art, I don't think I can probably do anything better in the science class. So I, I, I forced myself to be in a visual art class and I realized, I, I fell at home in the art class. Then from then I realized, that, okay, if you want to do, want to take art as a higher level, you have to make sure you're passing your sign, your EMX, because I know the elective, I was good at that. I was doing textiles, you know, knowledge okay. in art and graphics. Oh, okay. And that I know I was good at because I was doing that before I even went to secondary school. I oh, was doing okay. all the, the small, small painting. You know, then it's nowadays that you see full banners with SAV and all that. But then when you're doing banners, you buy printing paste, you pick your brush, acrylics and all that, and you write in the letters one, 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 on white cloth 
those are the banners them and now computer is changing everything mm -hmm. so that's what i was doing before i even entered into yes, secondary yes. school so i knew i knew that's what i wanted to do and i met one teacher okay uh, mr kk Abua, who was my textiles teacher and he would do anything for you to learn that is where the interest for textiles came in so textiles then he would advise you okay if you want to take the sound to a different level, then you have to make sure you are getting to the university. Make sure you probably go and do a higher level of textile that is industrial arts. Okay, so I, I told myself then I also have to get to the university and study textiles proper. And oh. ended up in general arts and studied textiles. And from there, I said so that is where my journey began. Really started. Okay. Oh, okay, so you being a science student and now switching to visual arts, you know visual arts students are mostly mocked by their colleagues that mm -hmm. they aren't serious, they don't know book and all that. that is so true. you being a science student, everyone knows that hey, science for them is a shark, and then you switch into the visual arts. Did you encounter any of these? I would say secondary school. You know when you when you talk about the, the visual arts, you mm -hmm. always see them. They're the ones in entertainment. They're the one dancing. Oh, the, the funny, funny things you find in secondary school, most of the time, in the visual arts class. Yeah. Because the course, the course is perceived to be, oh, when you're doing it's, it's, it's not hard to compare to the sciences. So definitely, it's always, it's always like that. But one thing I also realized that people who genuinely want to do visual arts, who are coming from good homes, they know what they're about. There are some few people in my class, I realized that they're from rich homes, all right. But they, they were in the visual arts class and they were clever. And if I cast my mind back, all those friends, they are all doing well. Except those that, because they didn't pass their, their subjects, they are forced to come into visual arts, and they don't have any art background, they don't even love it. They're the ones you find always, the two aren't in schools and the ones just playing around. So yes, definitely you'll be mocked. But if you know what you are, you are aiming at, what you want to do, I don't think it's a problem because for me, I knew, okay, that is where I wanted to find myself and I was there and I wanted to do this. So whatever you say is, is, is my back case and I, I make sure I, I move in a line that will probably help me. Okay. But was Sectec a first choice? Okay. So there's another story to this. Okay. We are I willing to I didn't, I didn't actually choose Sectec. I would say uh, during the time of uh, selection of school, I was okay. sick. Oh, okay. And... I was one student who was very good when it comes to then technical drawing and technical skills. I could tell you if I, if I pick my technical drawing file, I don't think I even got less than eight over 10. It's always nine, nine and a half in technical drawings. So I was very, very good at that. And I remember at the time I, I have a file with all my drawings and got lost and a driver who saw it somewhere brought it back to our school. And that could tell you that I was like looking at the kind of marks in the drawings, you realize this is a serious student. That is why the driver brought it back to me. And my, my technical drawing teacher then was the one who selected the school for me. I have no idea. I was sick. Okay. I think I was sick around that time. So I had no idea. And because of my technical background, he felt that I would be good in such a school. That is how come I ended up at Kofuda Sec Tech. And I would say, yes, I was proud because I, I met a teacher who actually guiding my path okay. for who I am today. Okay. So you speaking about rich students, meeting rich students in school, how was the background for you when you were growing up? Growing up, I would say I, I came from, I would say a, a humble, humble home. Okay. I wouldn't say poor and I wouldn't say well, an average, okay. average. And I, I, I have a mom who is ever loving everything that you probably want to do. She, she will support you, you and push you and okay. she will go through having a net to get what you want because she believes in the kind of dream that you want to part on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now um I attended New Job in so Oh okay. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, no, no, I get it. <laughs> okay. So okay. I know Sectec Boys has this name of being I, notorious, know. stubborn. Uh -huh. What kind of students was our brand here? I wouldn't say so. Yes, Abanja is a brand. <laughs> the honey, honey, but then mm -hmm. I would say 
I'm not I'm not the type that you always find in class. I'm not the type that you always find among the boys. I'm everywhere. I'm I'm the type of person that I experience life. Okay. I don't just because I realize that if you are probably just going to con concentrate on only books, 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 you are going to miss a lot. And uh, the life that we find ourselves in, experiencing things not in a bad way. Okay. Trying to experience life will gives you the chance to explore and know a lot of things. Okay. One thing I I have I have the passion of impacting knowledge to students. Okay. So when I go to schools to talk, I tell them they should make sure they take extracurriculum activities seriously. It shouldn't just be just learning, learning, learning. Make friends. Where there are events, make sure you partake in it. Okay. Because they are the same network that you are building that you are going to meet right after school. Okay. So I will say, I was at the Interco. At the point in time I was in Kofuda Sectec, I even printed some school jerseys for the school. Oh, wow. Yes. I, I, I had this... Fashion uh, began at a very tender oh, age. Oh, yes. I will say that. We were doing all the... Then we call it Kome. Kome means trying to work while I was in school, doing commercial stuff. I was with one, one teacher then. His name is, I think, I've uh, forgotten the surname, but oh, okay. it's called Parkwesi. He was, he was then a very hardworking teacher who would go and take jobs in Kofori and bring it to the school. And you call the good students and you will probably print jerseys for the zones. And so we're doing all that. I missed all the, and yes, the Saturday, you can think of Saturday visiting schools, yes, we do all that, entertainment, we do it, but the goal is to make sure that you're also learning and passing your exam, because right after secondary school, you know you want to head into the tertiary level, yeah. so what we are supposed to do, you do them as well. Okay, so I believe anyone watching will be asking, you pursued visual arts, so why didn't you go into drawing or maybe becoming an artist and then rather going to KNUSD to study um, fashion and textiles? Okay, so I'll say any, any visual arts student you will draw. Okay. It's, 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 it's they are basics. Mm -hmm. You will draw even at the university you will draw. Okay. Right from, that is why when you're in secondary school, there are different art courses, or let's say art subjects. Okay. There are picture making, textiles, graphic design. Aside that, there is general knowledge in art. So the general knowledge in art will give you understanding of you knowing exactly where you want to fall yourself. So right from second, as I told you, my teacher, Mr. Kiki Yabua, shaped you. Okay. He's the one who actually pushed me to go into textiles more because he will force you to learn. And he's a teacher that, before he comes to the class, his exam papers are, are packed in a way that the first is on top, the last is at the bottom. So if they mention your name, you know you're in the first in the class. And even the person who is first, if they ask you the, the, the school you are from, and you are from, then you say, oh, maybe a grade A school, nothing is said about you. But if you are at the bottom, and you are from a good school, okay. you can't stand that teacher. So you are forced to learn. I think that is where, and I wouldn't be, I, would, I, I don't want to be probably a brush in front of the whole class. So you learn his, his, his subjects. And then the interest for textiles, even though I was doing more of graphics while before getting into secondary school, the interest for textiles came in. And I just loved the subject. I, I actually picked it on and carried it on to the university. Okay. All right, so at the university, right after school, what next? Because you mentioned film. Mm -hmm. So how did that come okay. about to you? So me, me at uh, KNUST. KNUST, the first year is a foundation class. Okay. The foundation class, you do a lot of things. So if you find yourself in industrial art, industrial art and industrial art, I don't know if it's still the same. There's the textiles, there's the ceramics, and I forgot another one. There's, there's, that, there's the metal, that's the jewelry and all that. And then when it comes to fine art, that's where you find the painting, the graphic design, they also there. So I, I find myself an industrial arts. And industrial arts, the foundation class, you do all the basics that I mentioned. Okay. So while you're after the foundation class, the first year, the second year, you pick a particular one. That is when I pick textiles. So when you pick textiles, then you're going to go into details of the textiles. So when, it, when, when you talk about textiles, you know, you talk about probably because it's an industrial art, they teach, you, they teach you things pertaining to the industry. 
That is where we have all the paint companies coming in, machines and chemicals. And textiles is, is full of science. Okay. It's everything regarding to textiles, prints. Everything regarding to print is chemicals. So it's full of science. So that's when the textiles love came in. And trust me, it's a very tedious course. Then the fashion is not only just textiles, textiles and fashion. Okay. So fashion also come in there. And then I met uh, lecturers like uh, Ozana Pia, uh, Mr. Fimpo now is, and I think now is a professor, I think a doctor professor now, yes. And there are a few people who actually guided our path, who did marvelous, who are doing marvelous work well when you go to Kenya University, uh, College of Art, mm -hmm. and the industrial arts department. And I think now, uh, Dr. Fimpon, forgive me, I think he's a prof now. Okay. I'm, I'm messing up. People it's been who, long. Then he was my lecturer and a very good one as such. They will, they will push you to get, get your textiles right and that is we now. And at tech, I would say, I did a little bit of radio too. Once I was at tech, I was wow. into radio. Yes. As uh, what? I did, I did a little bit of presenting. Oh, okay. And I was, I was, part of the College of Art Executive. So organizing events was part of me. And all these things shaped our life. And whilst I was, that's where the brand started. So this brand that you are seeing today started actually from KNUST. Okay. It wasn't an advantage the gentleman then. Okay, so we'll go to the brand. Okay. But I want to take you back. Now, okay. before then, now we know um, people who sew as fashion designers, but okay. before then, people usually say tailor. Mm -hmm. and so I know that maybe if I'm in a class and then they ask me, what do I want to become? And then I say a tailor or a seamstress. People really make fun of those um, career as well as teachers. Did you encounter such and then how did you manage the situation by then? I think when I was young, the thing, I was looking myself more... Of, I, I pictured myself seeing products of... my products in magazines. Oh, okay. Seeing my billboards outside Ghana. It was, it was that kind of higher vision. Not thinking that if my products are probably on billboards, I have to produce them. That is the kind of thing that I was seeing. So I would say from, from that angle, I knew what or where I would probably want to see myself. And if I'm looking at seeing my billboard outside Ghana, I don't think anything else, whatever some, someone says, can belittle me. Okay. It, is, it is high level to me than you thinking, oh, I'm probably being a tailor or... And, and God being so good, the, because we knew the path that we are coming from, yeah. we studied for this. One of the days, if you say you are a tailor, they see you as, oh, you probably learn from a roadside. Mm. You are an apprentice to someone, so that is the kind of notion. There is a tailor who probably went to the universities to study what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And before I probably make an outfit to you, I'm telling you the weight of the fabric and all that. The composition of the fabric. If it's not just, it's not just cotton, it's a cotton and linen blend. And I'll tell you, it will weigh more. So for you, for you to use such a, a fabric at night, it's not good, it's good for daytime. So with this, you wouldn't tell me I'm just a roadside tailor. Okay. I know what I'm about. I'm telling you your, your skin color and telling the kind of, the fabric I'm color that will probably match your tone. So, there, there are differences to this. Okay. And when you say tailor, even at a professional level, yeah. there are different sections when it comes to the fashion industry or probably the fashion brand. Okay. A tailor is different from a fashion designer. Okay. But in our aspect, we classify all as one. Okay, but what's the Because one difference? person does a lot of things. Okay. Are you getting it? Yeah. Mm. So a tailor is a machinist. Somebody who sits behind a machine and work. Oh, okay. A fashion, design, a fashion designer in Ghana can sit behind a machine. But when you go outside, a fashion designer won't sit behind a machine. Are you getting me? Okay. A fashion designer can probably just have a vision or an idea and just speak the idea into an illustrator. So the illustrator will put it down. An illustrator put it down, it goes to a section that probably they will cut. When they cut from that section, it goes to a different section where you can find a tailor there. Who will now put it together? Who will now put it together? And from the tailor, it will go to maybe a different section and it goes and even goes, goes, goes down to the stylist who determine what to pair with what. Oh, 
okay. in our in our in our part of the world, one person does a whole lot of things. So you mean to say a tailor, a tailor goes, change the fabrics, mm. sit behind the machine, get it ready, do all the styling, might even do all the shooting or everything himself. He's, and it's like that. But there are different sections. So when you say a tailor, unless a tailor that is a brand, we have tailors that are brand. Okay. Elikem call himself a tailor. Okay. That is a brand. Okay. It's a fashion brand. I know people who probably have different different names. Okay. So yes, there are there are ways in which people classify these things. So when you are public or a tailor, I don't think it's a problem. I go places people will call you, oh, you are a tailor. Oh, yes, I'm a tailor. Yes, I'm a tailor. But when you come to me and we talk and I charge you, I don't think the roadside person will charge you the same way I'm charging you. Yeah. That is the difference. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Welcome. All right. And so did you ever um, act? Because talking about film. Okay, so yeah. I mentioned film. Yeah. So uh, I would say, whilst I was in KNUST, I told you I was into radio. Yes. I did a little bit of radio, then Conti FM, Continental. I was in Unity Hall, so we had a radio station, Conti FM. Okay. I, I encounter, uh, there was this production that came on campus. Because I was then into radio, I ended up with a production, and we started series. We started some TV series then. So that is what allowed for film also came in. And I, there was a, a curriculum course at KNUST that you, you, you'll be able to study film and probably know much about film. So that is where the love for film came in. And from that section, I would say the love for that came. We did a series in Kumasi, brought it back to Accra. It was shown on TV3 for a while. Then the love for film came in. I produced, I had, I had a whole production on TV3 that I produced with uh, Techno, Techno Mobile. Okay. The series was called Miss, Miss Call. I produced, oh, okay. I, 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 I screenplayed, I directed it. So yes, the film bag, and aside that, we, we've had some movies with people like Nadia Buari, Jackie Apia, Kojo Daxin. Done some couple of movies mm -hmm. under my belt. So the, the, yeah, the film aspect, we've done a little, yes, B.B. Bright. We bright is now into, I would say, more probably now into politics. So there are a few people that I probably work with. Okay. There's a few that I've mentioned. So I've done a little bit of filming, some series here and there. Oh, okay. But are you still acting? I don't act. I'm more of the behind the scene. Oh, okay. I produce and I direct. Oh, okay. And I've screenplayed screen too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't, personally, I don't act, but I'm mostly behind the camera. Oh, yes. okay. So I'm still thinking of maybe I'll, I could, I'll put out a fashion film. Let's see. And then we'll see you in that film. You won't see me. You'll see me <laughs> behind it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, looking at your profile, mm -hmm. I also realized that you, are, you did a couple of adverts for brands. So when it comes to producing adverts, you were the brain behind that. How did the idea come about? Because I know that production is not easy. Is it because you had a film background in production? That is why you're able to do all these things. Uh, from I think for the beginning I said that I don't even see myself as only as a did. I see myself as an artist. Okay. So things revolving everything surrounding art, I find myself in it. I've done a little bit of events too. So my film background as a result of experience in life. Okay. That is how come I ended up probably into film. And if you want to talk about probably art in general, you, you find that it's or even fashion. You can't have a good a good look book without uh, a fashion background or probably a film background because photography comes into play a little bit of having good fashion form with, with the kind of pictures that you take you have to look at it's a, it's a totality when it comes to art background the set that comes in all those things are very very important so i would say i always tell people the brand is what it is because of my art journey that is what has probably made me so if you see if you hear of an brand here the gentleman show you won't just come and watch clothes. It's a totality of art that you will experience. That is how the brand is. So it's a totality of art in general. And yes, because of that, I've been able to probably work with some few, few brands and producing collections for brands like Vlesco, GTP. I think I did something for Maz Mazda and some few international print, print firms like Ratty, and yes, almighty uh, print company, Blisco. I've done a couple of things for them. I would say it's a totality of the 
artistic nature of my brand. That okay. is how come we draw such brands. And I, 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 lest I forget, I've done things for Guinness too. And now I work hand in hand with Guinness regarding to some uh, fashion campaigns okay. and promotions. Okay. All right. So now the big question, how did Abrante the Gentleman come to play? Okay. Okay. So I'll say uh, the name Abrante the Gentleman. Because of my textile background, okay. I did my service at GTP. Oh, okay. I did my service at GTP. Before GTP, I've done some internship with ATL. I would say I've probably roamed almost all the textile firms in Ghana. I've, I've contributed my quota. And I, I work with, I mentioned GTP, printers, GTMC. I worked with GTMC for a while. These are all textile firms. Oh, okay. And I would say, through working with this, the love for print got on a higher note. So at a point in time, I find myself wearing a lot of print. And I realized that there was minimal usage of African print when it, when it comes to men. Because when you think about men, the only thing you think is, oh, if a man will probably buy print, they only buy two years for a shirt, that is it. And the ladies were, if you think about print, you think about ladies, ladies, ladies. So I told myself, I'm going to probably start, start a movement that will let men appreciate print more. And when I started wearing prints, it was hard to see men wearing African print pants. It's only when you travel that you see a lot of people using prints. Because just cast your mind in our Ghanaian settings. How many people you see wearing print pants, print bow tie, print even suit and all that? It is now that is kind of on the rise. But then it was quite hard. So I started a movement with that. And I realized that when I go for an uh, okay. event, okay. and I'm in, I'm in print, People turn out to look at you too, too. Then it, it just came natural. People started calling me a brand tail. Or they go like, Charlie, why a brand tail? Why a brand tail? Then I realized that that name was, it was just recurring every time I probably go for events. Mind you, I told you I started a brand while I was on campus. Yes. I didn't mention the name. So because of that, I realized that, okay, I was then working or having a brand name on campus before starting my national service. The name was Ronga Right. Ronga Right. Ronga Right. The, the idea was, because I studied textiles and fashion, I realized a lot of wrong things that people were doing in regards to fashion. Oh, okay. So I had this notion, I'm coming to change the wrong things to right. Interesting. So I came by the name Ronga Right. So I was using Ronga Right while I was in school, okay. as a brand name. Okay. And I was, then I was doing Ready to Wear. So when you go on probably KNUST campus, a lot of people knew about Ronga Rights. So that was the brand that I was working with. Then fast forward, started doing my service at GTP. You were going, you are now in love with print more. So started doing print things. And a bunch of just started popping up. Even though you are working with the brand Ronga Rights. Right. And my little brother was like, it looks like a lot of people are now referring to a brand here. So why don't you just capitalize on that and use it. Now, there is a catch. There are a lot of abrante things around. Then, I did, I did the first lookbook collection purely with prints that I designed, because I was designing prints. Oh, okay. So prints that I designed, that, that is my background. Okay. There are a lot of prints on the market that are to my credit. Most of the African prints that you see, I designed a lot of them. And I, I was part of a regime that, then it was secondary school, then it changed to senior high. Most of the senior uniforms I designed, I would say probably like 80 to 90%, I designed most of them. Mm. So that was the work that I was doing. Because I even saw the Ghana at 52. I did a lot of, a lot of major, major, major print designs. Okay. So then I said, okay, let me capitalize on a brand here. I had my first invitation to showcase in South Africa. Not in Ghana, po. No. So the first invitation, all expenses paid trip. I go to South Africa with a print collection, very huge print collection. I went with most of the Kinti prints that we have. Then in South Africa, they interview you, you now you mention Abrante, then they ask you, what is the meaning of Abrante? You end up explaining yourself to about a thousand people. Abrante means a gentleman. Abrante means a gentleman. Okay, fine, let me just coin it and make it one. Brand so the brand name became Abrante the Gentleman. Simple as that. So now when I travel outside, you don't need to explain yourself to people, Abrante means a gentleman. 
So the brand is about mm -hmm. the gentleman, and that actually stayed. And now that is the brand. So that is how come we we have the name about the gentleman as oh. a brand. Oh, okay, but someone would ask, looking at your background, I believe you were very good at what you do. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you stay with GTP after service? Okay, so I would say uh, there is a twist to this. Okay, the twist is. Why was at GTP? Mm -hmm. GTP is a very big place. I, 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 met, I met this gentleman called Mr. Akwe. So let me push it back. It wasn't even easy getting to GTP. I, I tell people that my path is well carved. I knew where I wanted to be. I wanted to do this and I was working towards that. I didn't, I didn't find myself or I wasn't posted to go and do my service at GTP. I forced myself to be at GTP. So I met this, uh, someone I refer to as a godfather, uh, Mr. Odro, Mr. Frederick Odro. He was then the plant manager at GTP. Okay. And he also, he did the course that I did. Oh, okay. So the same course, industrial art textiles, and I got to GTP, I wanted to do my service there. I got there, or like a whole week, I moved from Akata to Tema, just to get a chance to work at GTP, do my service at GTP. And the whole week I go, I meet a receptionist, I tell her, I'm supposed to do my service. She said, no, you can't just come here and do your service here. You have to. Then I met this man came at the reception and the lady was like, Mr. Drew, won't call for me a hand more. The man just look at me, then I followed the man. And I think the manner in which I told the man I have to do my service here, he was shocked. I was like, what did you study? I said, I went to tech. Then when I told him I did the same course that he did, then I got his attention. Then he was like, he was traveling to Holland, so I should come back after a month. I was like, ah, I should go and sit home after a month and come. Come back. Then I was, I was into film. So that one month, I moved my whole crew to Takwadi to go and shoot a film. After one month, I came back to Mr. Udru. Then he realized that, you told me after a month, and after a month I'm here. You can't just tell me anything again. It was like, Monday come. I get a Monday. He did everything that he could do. Then they pushed me into a department. And notes, coming from university, they put me into a department. I was wearing Wellington boots and overall. And I was in a particular room at the engraving section where all the chemicals. So you wear the overall, you wear your boots, then you wear marks and all that. The kind of thing that was running through me, I was so happy. Even though- That's not what you came in for. I knew where I was going. That was one thing. And I worked with joy. From one place to the other, I ended up getting to the design section where they used all the computers to do all the designs and all that. And I knew that is where I wanted to be. But if I was down and I was thinking, I come from Nevis, why should I come in World Barrow and Wellington Boot with all these marks? I would probably maybe stop. But the joy of just being at GTP was something else. Then I met, for Mr. Drew, getting into GTP, I met Mr. Akwe, Raymond Akwe. So Raymond was the one who taught me a lot of things. How to use computer to design all the African print that you see. So now I started working hand in hand with Raymond. And then I was running shifts. You go in the morning, you go in the afternoon, you go in the evening. So Raymond taught me a lot of things regarding to using the computer to design all these prints. And we were working hand in hand. We get, we, Raymond will probably bring jobs, we do the jobs, one thing led to the other. Then, that is where the Abrante thing started. So at GTP, then I realized that that is not where I want to be the rest of my life. Then I had a chance to, I had a chance to work, whilst I was at GTP, okay. that is something that was huge. I was working at two places. I was working at GTP, working at GTMC. These are both textile companies. So there's a catch. At GTMC, I'm a full boss. I have a whole office to myself. I have a messenger. I have, when I get to GTP, I have bosses. So I haven't, I haven't, this is wow. a story I haven't probably. Said it anyway. Anyway. I'm lucky. I, I was a point in time, I, I was in my office at uh, GTMC. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, there are some people who probably want to, they want to probably come and have a meeting, but at GTMC, I think the higher authority, they were not, they were not probably Ghanaians, they were Chinese. 
they were out on a break. So the next in command was me. And they were supposed to come and see me. Can you imagine my bosses from GTP actually needed something from GTMC and they had to come and talk to me? Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. And at that same time, I was still working at GTP. And the bosses. Yes. And they didn't even know I was still working at GTP. So I moved from Accra to Tema, working at two textile firms in Tema. When I'm at morning here, I go afternoon here. When I'm afternoon here, I go morning here. But how did you juggle that? Because I know that there may be instances where you know that you're supposed to work in the morning, but maybe something may come up. So at, at GTMC, I'll say at GTMC, they needed me. So they were going by my terms. At GTP, GTP is, is more well established. And I love GTP. <laughs> I love GTP, no, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things that are probably me now is a result of GTP. So I hold GTP in high esteem. And most of the people who taught me are also in GTP. But at a point I realized that I just have to probably choose one. And yes, I probably gained a lot of knowledge from GTP. So I stayed at GTMC. Then for a while, I decided to start your own business. The brand in full. Whilst I was at these two places, the brand was in session, but it wasn't that yeah. it wasn't that strong. And that, that was a critical moment trying to decide to forget about textile firms and concentrate on your brand fully. That that was that was a very critical moment. But it's not easy. You are getting paid monthly. So working on your side hustle as in your brand wasn't mm. that easy. But when you stop no monthly pay, you have to go full on your brand, and it wasn't easy, and God being so good, that is us now, we are still pushing and God has been good, and still yes, I still have relation with GTP, I work with GTP on different, different occasions, I've worked with GTP on major, you know, GTP ch champion wear Ghana, every match is wear Ghana month, yeah. and there are fashion shows that we bet, uh, myself and other great, yes, I forgot to mention Reverend, Reverend Steve Beidu, one pioneer, Probably member at GTP who helped in the Wear Ghana, Wear Ghana fashion show whilst, at, whilst he was at GTP. And we did a couple of great initiatives. So I would say, yes, I still have hand in hand with GTP and still do things. But now it's purely about the gentleman when it comes to prints. I do, I design African prints for private companies aside, aside a brand. So that is what I do now. Okay. So how was the business like when you started? Because this was a situation where even though you were practicing, but you were still working for two brands, and I believe that maybe you were scared. I don't know. I sure, can't sure, think sure, for sure. you. So working with two brands, what if I leave them finally, and then a brand here fails? What will I do? So did you encounter that, and then how did you overcome that it? Is, that is always a turning moment in uh, every individual, every entrepreneur's life. Okay. Most, most, most entrepreneurs start they are working and you start, you start a side hustle. It is very hard to quit and focus. Mm -hmm. And no two ways. When, when you quit your day job and you start something, uh, there is always a tendency of you going down before you rise again. That one is for sure. Because a few people I talk to is always like that. There are some people too, they are lucky, they are coming from probably good background. The foundation is there, you'll be able to sustain it. But it's always good to probably uh, have that experience. They say, who, who probably is down, fears no fall. You've probably gone down and you're probably up again. You don't mind falling again. And, and I would say, talking between that, it was quite hard. It was really quite hard because, one, you take monthly salary to sustain your side hustle. Mm -hmm. Now you're not taking it. So you have to make sure that you're pushing your, your, dream, your dream work or your dream brand so that it will stand. It, it, is, it is always like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It wasn't a good thing working at two textile firms without uh, your, yes, a, one knowing what you were doing at the other place. Because it, it, was, it, was, it was conflict. That is a conflict. Mm. But uh, I would say, now I won't do that. But as a, a, the younger self of me, you were ambitious, you were energized, you wanted to do all that. So we, we, we found ourselves through that. And mind you, I, I mentioned of my firm background. Mm -hmm. While I was at GTP, I was still doing other film things too. So it, it hasn't been easy. Jenny, Jenny, it hasn't come easy. It's always tough, but you make sure that every hurdle you cross it. Every hurdle you cross it. 
that is what has kept us going. Okay. So how did the name now become known to many Ghanaians and even people beyond Ghana? So I may mention of uh, my first show in South Africa. Yes, South Africa. That, that, that being a very small brand somewhere, having a first show outside, returning back to Ghana, now you realize that, okay, what you are, what you are seeing, now you're experiencing it. Because uh, when you talk about Africa, South Africa is one, one great place regarding to even fashion. And when you look at how their structures are regarding to fashion, you realize that you are probably experiencing something good. So the moment I was by, I realized that that is what I wanted to do. Let me take it seriously. So the few things that you learn from outside, you come down, you inculcate into what you are doing, and you push it. So while from South Africa, I realized that I have to take the brand serious. One thing led to the other. And note, the, the, the interview that got me to, that, that brought that exposure. I would say, I started with, you know this musician Adina? Yeah. My first interview, I used Adina's, Adina's mom sewing machine. Oh, okay. Sewing machine, because Adina's mom was then staying with, we were just neighbors. Okay. So that is how, that is how the brand started. So first interview came on TV, I think then it was, Forgotten the interview. Now, so far as you're on TV, the whole Ghana knows about you. People start calling you. Oh, I saw this. Can I get one? Then you realize, okay, this thing is getting serious. Mm -hmm. I saw this. Can I get one? One thing led to the other. And because what we were doing was unique and new, people got into it. When you, when you, you see people wearing a note, because of my background as a textile student, textile artist, I know much about print. I eat, I sleep, I dream about print. So if you see an brand here, shit, it's not a normal shit. I tell people we don't use the normal two years to probably make shit. You might probably see one shit, it might probably be a lot of wasted print just to arrive on one shit. So we were unique and different and people were, people who love taste, love what we're doing. And as a result of that, we started getting recognition, word of mouth, and one thing led to the other. And God has been good. From that, we've been able to conquer a lot of shows, both Ghana and across the world. Just, just name the country. Okay. You've been there. All right, very interesting story. So now, I believe as a businessman, you face challenges. Sure. You mentioned about challenges when you uh, wanted to switch. But let's talk about the after challenges when the business was established. Okay. So, as I rightly said, since, uh, I may mention of Adina's mom. Yes. So please. probably setting up yeah. wasn't easy. Trying to get a good team to work with. I would say my first uh, worker, who is still a friend. Okay. I was when I started a brand. I was moving as I was at GTP. The brand started. I was moving from. So I'm in Accra. I work at Tema. I close at Tema. I move from Tema to Accra. Kantamanto because I had a worker there. So from Tema to Kantamanto, from Kantamanto to, to Accra. Accra. That was my routine. Wow. <laughs> and I leave Accra around uh, 4.30 a.m. Because I have to catch a bus. I have to catch a bus that will take me to Tema, a GTP bus that will take me to Tema. If you close, the bus won't just take you straight to your destination. The bus will roam within Accra. So before you get to Accra Central, that I'm probably going to work on my personal hustle, it's late. You get home late at night, you start the same rounds again until, okay, let's start working at home. Let's get a machine. Let's get workers. Who do you think can probably work, you can work with? Who can you trust? Building a team is noisy. And one problem when it comes to this, our job is tailors. People who believe in your dream, that will, that will see the vision that you, you are probably carrying that can follow you. It's quite hard. Okay. Up to present day. If you ask every fashion house, the problem with tailors. Some go, they come, you have issues, they have issues, they tell you lies, just like any, any, any organization. Mm. Aside that, yes, when the brand is getting higher, you realize that the tastes and the kind of quality of materials and probably fabric that you use to also comes in. So there are a few challenges. So when you travel and you have chance to probably buy certain things, you buy them so that you avoid problem with accessory and all those things. But aside that, Tailors is a one-on-one problem. Okay. 
all right so talking about challenges i believe you have best encounters can you share with us because wow. from your profile i saw a lot of awards <laughs> so now we want to listen to the best encounters okay okay i i forgot this let me chip okay. in this i really need to say this all right so the point one one of the down moments in my fashion business mm -hmm. the point in time i got invited to be in milan and i was supposed to go with uh, a section of my team mm -hmm. so i took i took one tailor uh one tailor and two models to go for to go for to go for a show in milan and could you believe uh, the tailor that I trusted so much? I wanted to set example to my other workers. I took all expenses paid for this tailor. We go to Milan, and he just vanished. I couldn't see him again. Just like that. Just like that. And this actually caused me. We missed our flight. Supposed to find ways and means to get money to pay to get back to Ghana. These are these are some of. Things, uh, some of the, uh, I say one of one of mine, when it comes to the working challenges, I just needed to chip in this. Aside that, yes, there are there are good moments regarding to our. No, wars. but at that point, what did you do? At that point, I don't think we have time for this. <laughs> so let me say this. So uh, Ajima Medu, the the how do you call it? The former black star player. Mm -hmm. I think it was then in Italy. So we have to call and probably try and talk to him and see if how best. He can probably arrange because it was it was really it was really a blow point. Mm. Missing your flight, you don't have any money to pay you need for to take the next flight back. Pay ticket for other people that you were with because we thought he has probably missed his way and couldn't find his way home and he's lost or something. Not knowing he has actually left his bag and find his way somewhere. And up to today. So these these are it, it was it was a it was it was a big blow as at that time. And imagine you being invited by. It was a very big uh, program, Expo. Then I think Expo Milan. Then it was a very very huge organization who invited us to. I was a speaker and at the same time show showcasing designer for the Expo. And I was presenting Ghana then. It was quite a huge blow. And they were thinking, oh, you came with this project just to come and do this and. It was all planned. And this is, I, I got to Milan and there were giant billboards of me mounted in Milan. That is how huge it was. And I got there and there were all paparazzi. Blah, 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 blah. So after all the paparazzi, one of the people would just sneak and couldn't find a place. And these same people who were doing all the paparazzi think all, everything was planned. Mm. It was quite a blow. So that was one, one down moment in this journey. And yeah, they've been they've been good, good, good memories. I would say yes. The awards are most of the time the the awards I would say yes, the awards are good. Mm. But the the most when when a designer probably spent time putting up a collection together and you showcase at a place and you are out and there is a standing ovation. I would say that is even fulfilling more than receiving an award. For me. Yeah. Because I've, I've done shows, I may mention of South Africa, mm. Milan, Amsterdam, just mentioned. And when you are outside, people who probably don't know you, and you showcase, and they wake up, and they clap for you, they are quite fulfilling. Because you spend a lot of time trying to put up a collection together. Those moments are great. Yes, the awards too are great. I would say one of, one of my, one of my uh, the awards that I cherish, Yes, uh, Glit Africa is one award that I cherish because uh, I had Glit Africa award at the very moment that I realized that people that I was, lo I was looking up to, people that whilst I was working at GTP, I was looking at how they are probably positioning their brand and all that. To stand with people like that and probably win an award over them, that means I was probably doing something good. And uh, Scrivy Man of the Year award, it's a point in time I stood with. Uh, I would say notable men's wear brand okay. that I probably won over and I realized, okay, that means I'm doing something good. Well, Screaming Men of the Year Award, Glitz Award, and some international awards too. And yes, 40 under 40 fashion, then award award in Nigeria for uh, best international men's wear. 
And some few are the ones that I could probably remember. Oh, okay. And a lot of recognition from different, 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 different places. Oh, okay. Okay. Very interesting. I have learned a lot from your story and I believe everyone out there has um, been able to identify one or two things they didn't know about you because now I know that your name is Ohine Bananaya Obama. So you are still watching the career through Enjoy Learning TV. I can't do the questioning alone. Before coming here, I spoke to a few people that I am coming to interview Abrante, the gentleman, and they had a lot of questions for him. So many questions, but I had to skew it down to three. So let's take a quick breather. We'll be back with the so, um, social media questions where we get to engage um, a brand here and then he gets to answer the questions for us. This is still the Career Trail on Joy Learning TV. The Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. Welcome back from that quick breather. This is still the career show on Joy Learning TV. We're having a conversation with a brand here, the gentleman. He has said a lot, but we are the second part of the program where I get to ask a brand here three questions. These three questions are not from me. They are from his fans. They want to know more about him. So I will give him the opportunity to select which of the platforms he wants to start with. We have one from Facebook, Twitter, and then Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Okay, so let's take a look at the Instagram question. The Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. Discipline. I have to be disciplined in all aspects. If you are disciplined, it cuts across. That is, that is one thing that I'll say. If you are disciplined, you, you won't probably procrastinate things. You are focused. You, you put everything in the right order. And I think it's a part that it is very easy to attain or probably be a good entrepreneur. Okay. If you are disciplined in every aspect of what you do. Okay. All right. So the second platform, which one should we go with? Facebook. Okay, let's take a look at the Facebook question. The Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. Okay. I'll say uh, it's the love for the work. Okay. What I do, it is passion before business. So when there is passion, you, do, you don't feel tired and you love what you do. I think that is one thing. So no matter what, being it at work, probably being it traveling or whatever it is, the passion comes before anything. Mm -hmm. I enjoy what I do. Okay. So I always want to do them. Oh, okay. So with that, I, I, don't, I don't see my problem myself. It, it, it gives me that, uh, that, that, that grounded probably nature. Okay. It is a passion for it. I work, uh, my wife would say I work 247. Even, well, even when I'm not probably at the workspace, I'm talking about work. Okay. It, is, it is just my life. That is, that is how I am. Okay. So you take a look at the last question. The Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. Uh, I wouldn't say... Uh, but do you have a competitor? Even I, though they are brands. I, I, I know I'm number one when it comes to menswear. Okay. No doubt. Okay. I know. Because I know what I produce. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I'll probably say is, we are all unique in our ways. Okay. We are all unique in our ways. And believing in what you do makes you stand out. And what I do, you can probably cut across and probably look at brands that are out there. You stand out. And if you are unique in what you do, and not probably looking at what someone is doing, you just focus on yourself. You always probably produce good things. And for my background, uh, I would say I've, I've been through the mill 
I've been through the mode of, of I'm just fashion when it comes to this. I'm, I'm just it. That is one thing I'll say. There are people who are just businessmen. Mm -hmm. They are there. But when it comes to fashion, I know what I bring to the table. That is what I'll say. Okay. So now I have a question for you. This okay. is coming from me personally. Okay. What would you have done if this brand had failed? The same brand. The same brand. I'll do the same brand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he'll do the same brand. I want to ask this question. You were working with two brands who were still uh, all under textiles, right? Mm -hmm. um, wasn't there any problem? Because I believe every company has their own vision and then mission. I would say uh, the, prob the problem there was me working at GTMC while GTP wasn't aware. Okay. And uh, it, was, it wasn't a good thing when my bosses from GTP got to know came to GTMC. And then found out. Yes. Okay. That is that is where that is where it was. And and, and, and obviously because they are all textile firms, mm. it wouldn't even be advisable. Mm -hmm. But the younger self of me wanted to probably do it. So that okay. is that is how come okay. it was like that. All right. So I believe Abrantia has answered all your questions. Abrantia, the gentleman. Now we are going for the second, uh, sorry, the last aspect of the program where I get to have fun with Abrantia. But do you have fun looking at how busy you are? I, I enjoy the work that I do. The work, I have, I have fun in the work. So I'll say that is it. Aside okay. that, let's see. Okay, so let's see. The Career Trail. Your success journey begins here. Welcome back from that quick breather. You are still watching The Career Trail on Joy Learning TV. Now, this is the third aspect of the program where we get to have fun with our brand here. So we are going to give you a task. I'm going to give you a task to perform. Wow. At the end of the day, I get to give you these cards. So if you pass the task, I raise the green card. Okay. If you fill the task, I raise the red card. Okay. I hope you are not going to fill your fans. You're not is, feeling is, your teachers. Is the tax around fashion? <laughs> is it around fashion? I can't tell. <laughs> it's around fashion then fine if not i don't think i have hope but let's, <laughs> let's see all right so we have this here you get to pick one of the paper and okay. give it to me all i right. can't open it no wow. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so our brand is selected in a minute. Use um, the letters in your brand's name, our brand here, to list eight languages in the world. Okay, so we have Arabic. Mm -hmm. B. Uh, it's not coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, R. R. It's not coming. A. A. It's not coming and okay in zima is language right okay so in zima uh, g okay italian okay english so can you try the the <laughs> remaining <laughs> words that he left out the okay the b his time is not up <laughs> his time is not up b b b b b hi why is did I get an R? You didn't get an R. Remember when I mean just one, suits one, ten, one. Anna. Ten. Aye. Hey, this is like a boy. <laughs> so I believe his time is up. So how, how many did you get? You were able to do A, and then I did A, a. I did N, I did T, I did I, I did E. So you were able to do five. Five out of eight. I sure he did five. He did A. I did A. You did N. I did and I did T, I did I, I did E. Oh, okay, so you did five he out did of eight. B R A. That okay. I couldn't do. So you could have mentioned Bono. It came in mind though. Then I was thinking, if it's is it a, a language region. or a region? Mm. Don't let me embarrass myself. Okay, and then R. Then the R. I don't know if I don't know if Russian is a language. Russian is I a was language. thinking about that. I said, okay, no. It's better, it's better to be quiet than. <laughs> and then another E. 
Hey, the crap is ready as I'm dead. My people will kill me. <laughs> wow. And I'm By way, to mention Arabic. Hey. Oh, that's bad. So, that's bad. Sh which car should I raise for you? You go. It's up to you. At least I got more than half, right? Okay. I got more than half. All so. right. So I get to raise the green card for a brand yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did well. I did well. All right. So someone just it was um it has been a very fun time with you, mm -hmm. um learning time with you. I have learned a lot. I have picked a lot. Now I know okay. the difference between a tailor. At least I know the difference between a tailor and a fashion designer. So around here, someone just tuned in to watch you. Okay. The person couldn't watch from the beginning. Well, the person has a chance to go back to our YouTube. The program will be repeated. Okay. But I want you to say just a line for the person to take home. So you can speak to your camera. What I'll say to the person watching me now is follow your passion, follow your dream. Nobody knows your passion more than yourself. Don't give up. Nobody knows your passion more than yourself. My name is Irene Edubia Ainin. Joy learning, keep learning. Trail. Your success journey begins here.